Okay, I have we have Derek Bloy on at the going to come on there now. He's uh Derek is the president of Ireland First and he's gonna come on here now and just give us a little insight into what he's doing. How are you, Derek? How's things? How are you getting on, boy? Well, good. We're doing very well. Yeah, we're doing very well. You're going to come on and you just tell us how you're getting on, what the canvassing is like. I've seen some of your great videos. You're doing great work down there, you know? Ah, look, you know, we were expecting kind of hit and miss. Um, who are you? You know, tell us a bit about you. But I couldn't believe the reception we got um, in Mitchellstown was 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 top class. People were literally running out the doors to us. Oh, I've seen you on on Facebook and I've seen you on Telegram and YouTube and I watch your stuff and I think it's brilliant what you're doing. Um, I support Ireland first. You don't even need to ask me for your vote. Brilliant. I'll give you my number one, no problem at all. And it was. Do you know what? There was uh, there was times there on the day I I almost had a tear in my eye. You know, it was so yeah, 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 it was yeah. so positive. And um, Rock on. we've been out around Mitchellstown now a few times. Right, we've been up in Cork City um, twice now already, and it's well, just more of the same. Uh, people have been looking at the content right, that myself and Tommy and others. Um, yeah. have been putting out for Ireland first and uh, they they know something is seriously wrong they know something is seriously seriously wrong but the thing tell about us a bit Irish more about that then uh, is Derek. and I've said this sorry Fintan what you say Please to meet you I, too, by saying, the way. Just tell it, tell us a little bit. I'm really interested because uh, you know I've done the old doorstep through the housing estate job myself every time, you know, and it's it's a real test of where support is and where people are coming from, you know. So, in terms of what you encountered, were these people? Mm. I'm trying to get a picture of them. Were they uh, disillusioned shinners? Were they older? Fianna Fáil used to be supporters before Fianna Fáil went totally cor corrupted altogether. Were they, were they middle of the road people? Were they younger people? Were they, were they the poorer people? Like, yeah. Who are they who are giving yeah. you the most enthusiastic reception? What's their, what's their spectrum? Well, Mahin would be a real working class area, a proper mm -hmm. working class area. Um, you had, you, you had a mixture. Of of right, the groups you just spoke of, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, there was Shinners, and it was, nice. you know, it was pretty much the same right throughout. Right, there were Shinners there who said that they had voted for Sinn Fein for their whole life. Right, Cork City would mm -hmm. have a would have would be a fairly um, loyal Sinn Fein stronghold. Right, and for right, yeah. the people in Mahan to come to us and say that I've voted for Sinn Féin my whole life. Um, the other two, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, have completely abandoned us. Um, Sinn Féin will probably do the same. We don't know who to vote for. And then right, to have uh, people from a party not like the politicians, right, that they're used to seeing, mm -hmm. smiling, you know, insincere, um, promising them right, the world that they know right, they won't deliver. Um, these people were met by right, just ordinary men and women, um, bricklayers, we truck drivers, we... Um, stay-at-home mothers, we had uh, teachers um, knocking at their doors, right, and giving them an alternative. And, you know, Fantastic. even the ship. We knocked at approximately 500 doors on Saturday. Approximately mm -hmm. 500 doors. That's a a fairly good guesstimate. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, three negatives, Three people refused our flyers and handed them back. Three was Very it. Good, man. The, rest of them, 
the rest of them had either heard of us um, or if they hadn't heard of us, they looked at our policies, they, they spoke to <coughs> us, um, or they realised that we were genuine. Oh, you're the man, actually. Oh, you're the man. And um, he opened the door. He was, he, was, he was a tough cook, you know. He was from Belfast. He was from the Falls Road in Belfast. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was also in the Irish Army for 30 something years. And he kind of looked me up and down first. He looked at my flyer. He looked to see what we were about. And he um he started asking me the tough questions, you know. But because he thought he didn't know who I was. Uh, yeah. He kept me there for 15 minutes and he grilled me, okay? But by the end of it, uh, he thanked me for coming to his door. He said that he might not vote for me because he, he, was, uh, he was a Sinn Féin. Um, he was loyal to Sinn Féin for his entire life. He said at the start of the meeting that he believed um, that all the people that were coming into the country were legitimately fleeing war. He said he'd been to all these countries prior mm-hmm. and he said they're not nice places to live. But when I questioned him about Georgia, when I questioned him about Algeria, uh, Turkey, I said there's no uh, war in these countries. These people, right, they're not fleeing, fleeing war. Right? They're coming here for economic reasons. I spoke about the, the 8,500 people that came in with either false passports or no passports whatsoever Mm -hmm. yeah and the more i spoke to him the more i could see his face softened um he said to me at the end of the encounter that he may not vote for ireland first but he thanked me for coming to the door he really appreciated having the conversation and he said that he could tell that i was a man who was passionate about what I was doing, and uh, but he wished me all the luck. No, for him well, to go from extremely critical, right at the beginning of that meeting, and mm. he was a like he was a different man at the end of it because yeah. right, it's like I just said, people know that something is seriously wrong in their country, right? Even him, yeah. and and I'm sure that he even felt right that a Sinn Fein vote was a wasted vote. But yeah, he was so loyal for his entire life. You know, he might still go well, that I, way. And, yeah, I think you, I think you, you, you planted a seed there <laughs> that could well bear fruit in due course because uh-huh. uh, that man is one hundred percent. But good to see the engagement. Yeah. Good to see that it was cross party. That's just so many people disillusioned with the system. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah you know, needing an alternative message which you're bringing to them. And also good to mm. see that, you know, when when you could go toe-to-toe and face-to-face with somebody, that you just came across as a genuine person. You know, that's, yeah. the, that's the acid yeah. test on the doorstep when you're dealing with people is that you're approaching them in a genuine way and not as, as a political, slick, uh, suited yeah. political operator. I've seen the Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, uh, you know, a Sharp Soup Brigade, you know, as they canvas, and uh, it's just a joke because it's yeah. all top down, top down politics controlled by party HQ and the corporate international agenda. Mm. Whereas you're you're uh, you're you're going toe to toe with grassroots there. Great well, to see you, disillusionment with Sinn Fein too. But go ahead, yeah. Sorry, Derek. You're like myself. You were sitting there and nothing was happening, and you thought someone has to do something here. I did the same um, when I joined mm. the Irish Freedom Party, and you know, now I'm not with the party anymore. I've, I've taken back the candidacy. I'm not going as a candidate anymore. It's not due to any arguments or any crap like that. It's just I have some family issues that I need to sort out. You know what I mean? And who knows? We yeah. don't know whether yeah. I go back or I don't go back. You know what I mean? But at this moment in time, I'm going to step back for a while. Like, but I'll still keep doing this and doing what we have to do to get the word out. Like, you know what I mean? I wanted to ask you as well. Have, yeah, you, have you candidates in other constituencies, Derek? <laughs> Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, we've candidates. We've got about 13 candidates at the moment. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, we're not announcing um, We're not announcing them yet. We're just going to try to build up um, support in the areas first. 
You come on, yeah. We don't we don't we don't want to we don't want to tarnish um we don't want to tarnish the opportunities by releasing their details too early. You know you know how the leftists work now. They'll you know they'll uh, they they'll try anything to destroy someone's lives. Um, I've announced myself as right, the East Cork candidate right, just because I'm. I have no fear of leftists. I have no concerns. They can, <laughs> no, you know, they right. don't intimidate me. Yeah, good man yourself. That's why we need you back, Paul. I know you said or you stepped <laughs> back from the IFP temporarily, but we need you back on the scene again. You know, yeah. um, there's, there's a certain there's a certain mindset. There's a certain um, a certain type of person can take on this role. And like, if you've got the backbone, like to face these people down, then yeah. You know we're we're gonna need you, but um yeah we've got about thirteen candidates at the moment, um we may run all of them we may not run all of them yet but we're we're building them up we're getting them um to uh start getting busy themselves right and yeah. we're gonna start canvassing uh their areas um there's East Cork there yeah. We're going to start canvassing their areas and build up support for them right before we release their names. And we're always taking on more candidates. We're like we're getting Gosh, emails yeah. all the time uh, from people. Anything, anything, uh, anything we can help you with. Anything we can help you with, we'll help you with. As we said, we're going to promote. Yeah. We were we were promoting the Freedom Party for a good while, okay. And people said it to me last week out in Dorky. like at the Freedom Party and the Freedom Network is one, isn't it? And I, I said no. I, I had to explain it to them. So we had to sort of step back and put out a statement on tours. They saying that yeah, like the Freedom Party had exclusive rights to this, but now everybody is on board with the Freedom Network because it's the Freedom Network. It doesn't matter w what you say or what your opinions are. Mm -hmm. If you're running for election, whether you're a, a, a in in a party or whether you're an independent, we will support you and we will put out your word. And you can come on here and talk anytime. That's the policy. That's yeah, the way that's to do it. That's what people need, you know. That's what people yeah. need. We need we need the coverage. The ma mainstream media have, have yeah, absolutely. The mainstream media have completely abandoned us and they've completely abandoned yeah. 75% of the population. And no, yeah. we need to become the media. You know, we need we that's need to it, take yeah. that from them and we're doing a we're doing a fantastic job of it at the moment, anyway. And yeah, fair play to well, yourself. Well, for, well, that's uh, what we did. In the back room, that, you know? Sorry, that's what me and Gavin did last week with the with the documentary thing we did on uh, D four and out around that way, Darky. That went down a tree, as I said earlier. It went down a tree, and then we went out there and we put up our yeah, own yeah, yeah. just to let them yeah. see how easy it is for it to happen. And I think it was yeah. a real awakening for them. You know what I mean? I think it really was. And then they tried to do the hit pieces on everyone on Wednesday. Brilliant! Yeah. It was brilliant. I have to say, it it, it has soared them, has excelled them into the sky now. That's how big they are now. You know what I mean? Andy Heesman, Ross Lehave, yourself, Ferg. Jesus, Ferg is like a star. Yes. Ferg is doing all the roles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's great to see. It's great to see. This is the breakthrough we've been waiting for for a long time. And uh, one of the most encouraging parts of your canvas yeah. there was to hear you say that people say, yeah, I saw you on you know, Telegram or I saw you on. Yeah, because despite the media control from the center, we have been able to leverage the social media. They, they just can't plug all the holes and everything. And so people are able to get in touch with the message. We just have to be uh, bring the same level of professionalism to the way we run things you know, with independent candidates and smaller parties collaborating with each other on a professional level playing field. Everybody welcome, all views welcome, all because we have so much more in common with each other than we do have that separates us yeah. from the people that yeah. are trying to take our country off us. So uh, I'm all behind that, Paul, and uh, uh, all, all spectrums of, of uh, political opinion which are imposed to this corporate grab you know, this plantation mm. of our country and this decimation yeah. of our people and this destruction of our health and the exploitation of the resulting sickness. You know, I feel like we are, we're like the, the Molly McGuire's gave right, you know, came out of the mining conditions because we're like people working in a mining town 
where the doctors work for the mining company and the food we get in the supermarkets is the mining company again. And, you know, nobody's telling us what's bad for our health that's in that food. And the mining company doctors are only prescribing stuff that keeps us indebted to the entire system where you never get out of this in indebted servitude and you're effectively prisoners in a system which is exploiting you. We are no different. It's so, it's amazing what it's degenerated into so quickly, you know, as you can see it all around us. And it's great yeah. encouragement to see that the grassroots fight back is on and that you're getting that kind of response, you know, on the doorstep, dude, because that's where we need to be is on the doorsteps. And and it happened so quickly. It happened so quickly. The last few years, right, there was a lot of people worried around this country. They said, what's after happening to the Irish? But the Irish are, uh, you know, we're, we're a different bunch. We're not about... Um, we're not protesters, really. We're not protesters. The Irish, they aren't, they aren't a loud bunch. So um, some people were commenting about the numbers, like on the streets for the last few years, and they said, mm -hmm. with these numbers, we're never going to be able to achieve anything. But where the Irish won't come out in the streets for the large part, they will vote quietly at the ballot box. And that's Absolutely. where we have to get them. If they have that's an alternative. That's it. We need an if, alternative. If, yeah. Yeah. But that's where social media comes in as well. We build yeah. the brand with social media because mm -hmm. for the most part, people are coming home from work. If they're not watching TV, they're doing this, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right? And they're looking at you know, they're looking at Facebook or whatever. And, you know, it's things like what Gavin Pepper was doing up in, um, what was that area today? Rathgar, he, he was at Mel Sutcliffe, yeah. We're going to talk yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff like that is very important. It's, yeah. it's like, it's very important to call these people out. But yeah. what it is also is it's very entertaining. It's very yeah. entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are looking at that on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and uh, even the people right, that aren't engaged with the political side of things will still look at that because it's interesting. Yeah. And when it comes to voting time, if Gavin or you know Paul or myself or whatever candidates right have represented ourselves well enough, like on the social media screen and produ produced content right, that keeps right, the viewer engaged. Right, then that's you know, that's a good part of the battle. So, you know, Trump did it in 2016, he used social media to get elected. Yeah, and yeah, that's where we are now. So, we have to do it intelligently, we have to do it coherently. We have, we have to be, we have to be polite. Um, I'm saying this to people, um, I'm saying this to our candidates. You have to be polite to people. You have to um, know your argument and present it well. Yeah. And, you know, you will get Irish people. Because right? Irish people are different. We're not the same as, like, American people. We're not the same as French people. You you ha you have to go about it in a particular way. And, um, we, look, we're having, we're, having, we're having great days out. You know, canvassing, I never thought, right, it would be so much fun <laughs> because the laugh we're having at the door yeah. with pe Cork people are great. They're fantastic. Yeah. You can have a you can have a laugh and a joke and even the with the canvassers, we're having a great time all day. And people are looking at us. We're walking around their estate smiling and laughing. And my brother Tommy there, you, you'd hear him before you'd see him coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, laughing. Like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know... It's a great day. We'll be up yeah, in um, yeah. uh, Westmead though soon. We're going to start canvassing in Westmead, and we're going to start it in Dublin as well soon. We've we've we've, we've a bit of work to do around the country yet. But what I was going to say was, I hope um, that with the other parties, with the Irish Freedom Party and the National Party, that uh, there can be some. Cooperation, yeah, 
between them. Yeah. If the Irish Freedom Party have a stronger candidate in an area, we have no problem in Step pulling our yeah. We have yeah. no problem. Yeah. Because we have to look at the we have to look at the bigger picture here. We have to look at the end goal here. Yeah. The more nationalists we can get into government yeah. and form a voting block and yeah. support each other, uh, the better. All right. Yeah. And whatever becomes of that block, right, who knows? A lot of people might leave um Ireland first, right, and go to the National Party, right? All right, they might leave. Right, and go to the Irish Freedom Party or uh, vice versa. We don't know. But mm. we 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 all have to support each other and coordinate with each other now. Yeah. Uh, right. To get as many nationalists in right, to power. Yeah. And what happens after that right, is the next. Well, you look at it. Even if we got six people in, just yeah. for pig on six, if a lot of these. Win. If we yeah, want, but, but a, a lot of these votes are, are, are only by one or two votes. Whereas if we yeah. had five or six people, even three or four people in there, we could upset yeah. the apple there. You uh, could, absolutely. you could get laws taken. You know, it's it, we could. You know what I mean? And that's absolutely that's the end game, the big picture. Uh, well, there's a yeah. sort of a big move on like that at the moment. I mean, I think the establishment are aware of this too, that there is this huge hole in the political system that's not representing. The people we're talking about right now, yeah. and they're aware of that too. Uh, so we've uh, seen recent moves for them to try and like paint themselves as farmer friendly, you know, because they're quite aware of the rural threat. Yeah. Uh, because they've a, they're not farmer friendly at all, <laughs> you know. So they're aware yeah. of this issue, but um, there's the independence issue as well, and the, the independence talking about a new party. So I'm afraid that that new party will be another. Just the usual suspects will line up to gerrymander and commandeer uh, mm. this momentum into a fake version of it, which yeah. is actually not focused on the real grassroots issues at all. So I think there we're going to find ourselves going up against a fake version. So on one hand, uh, the independents are part have to be part of our strategy, but on the other hand, some of them are a poison chalice. That would just lead us into a fake movement that wouldn't achieve anything. Stuff that's actually happening to a degree in in uh, the Netherlands at the moment, for example, with the Dutch farmers, uh, where we're just having difficulty actually translating it into real grassroots teeth, as opposed to more fakery, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, the independent surely as well have got to be part of our strategy in order to have that same level of alliance with true independents who are not going to be, you know bound by any structure but will actually represent the, their own people if we can selectively yeah. you know coalesce with independence who are on our wavelength then you know we could get quite a broad church there that could transfer votes to each other in our pr system yeah that's where we'd really a big win yeah well, that's what yeah we need exactly uh, make some sort yeah, of back or whatever you know yeah. yeah 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 we've reached out to a few and uh we're we're we haven't heard much back yet, but look, we're we're a bit away from reaching, the election, you know. Huh? At least you're reaching we out. are, yeah, we are, yeah. But I think if we if we can create this broad church, this is our challenge to create this broad church that that lots of people feel that they can participate in it because there's a mm. cooperative momentum behind it. Mm. You know, mm. as long as it's focused on the people who truly are on our wavelength and not that those gears don't become ground up with the dirt of people who are not actually really on our wavelength. But as long as we're a bit selective about it, we could like just help create this broad church. Some of that might flow into our own parties, you know, that each of us are allied with or whatever, you know, some of that interest, but some of it may remain independent. We wouldn't mind that either because there are potential transfer votes in and out or whatever. As long as we all say, Mm -hmm. you know, we get that nationalist voice speaking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you're right. Right, yeah, we move so, on. Can I just, uh, as I was saying earlier about Mel Sutcliffe, that's where the lads went there earlier today, and I'm just gonna show you who this guy actually is. Look, you know what I mean? Mel T. Sutcliffe. There you go, Quanta Capital. That's him there. 
This he's, man, a bit of a, he's a bit of a shady looking character, isn't he? Ah, uh, he's an evil looking fella, isn't he? He's like a Bond yeah. villain or something, isn't he? Yeah, that's, yeah, what money, yeah. that's what money does for you. But this is him there. He's the founder of Quanta Capital and Quantum Supremacy Fund. And this guy owns, he owns uh, the ESB building. He owns the, here we go. Look, Phil engaged in insider trading at CNC. This is in 2022. He's buying the Docklands, mm -hmm. Grove, the Burlington Real Estate closing in on 29 million deal for Carisbrook House. Now, Carisbrook House, I think, is the old Israeli embassy as far as it looks like it because we were there last week. Okay, and that's what that looks like. 29 million deal for that. And then Capital Oils, Colony Capital, he's part of this as well. Jesus Christ, this man has fingers in every pie, you know? No wonder he doesn't want migrants over his side of the town. You know what I mean? Well, he's famous you know? though. We'll put it that way. Oh, he is famous oh. now. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is a video from uh, outside of his house, and That's this it. is uh, yeah. two hours ago. Fourteen views on the video, but uh, this is we are with the ninety percent who disagree with government policy. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, this is two hours ago in front of his house. So yeah, the guy uh, we made him famous. Yeah, <laughs> we need to make these sure people have. famous as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, Mel, very interesting character. Right? Because, to it. Uh, he has some interesting court judgments against him too. Look at that. Was against former landowner and rulings over lands earmarked yeah. for data center. So he's certainly been in the courts on some of these issues too. Uh, but that's all they do, Fintan. It's just go, go through the courts, pay the money. That's it, and it's a fine or it's a whatever you know. And then they just move the migrants in. Like they're actually doing renovations in the mm -hmm. ESB building in East Wall now at the minute. Yeah, to, to house another 150 of them. Come on, like it's it's ridiculous. Like you know what I mean? And and even it, when you look at Turnip and Lane, like Jesus Christ, man, that is an it's not even an office. It's a it's a warehouse. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. And like, why are they putting them in warehouses out here? When like we showed that C Bank house in Booterstown Avenue. That's like something out of a bleeding out of a Disney movie. A gl big glass place. You'd fit five thousand in there. Well, no, no, let's not put them in there. Let's no, let's leave them in the lower class, you know. That's the way it works here, and that's yeah, that has yeah. to stop. Has to stop. Yeah. That well, is look, awesome. What's this is that always protest started. and the number of people at that protest. There was a good few, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. just trying to get Gavin on there. Gavin's actually walking at the minute, so. He said he'd try and come on, but he's walking at the minute, so I can't uh, get him on. Just I'm sure us. he could pull over for five minutes in a taxi. Ah, sure. He's up in the, he's up in the cash. He's probably having a bit of grub or something. You know what I mean? He oh, said he's okay. outside talking to a few foreigners. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that went very well now today, I have to say. It was very good. Oh, now. top class, yeah. Yeah. But again, as you said, that's what you have to do. Call these people out and let the people in the area know what he's doing and who he yeah. is. You know, He's the man that's behind all of this. You know, and listen, well, these are our oligarchs. <laughs> you know, we're, yeah, but we're listen, living in an oligarchy. Just him. It's not just him. We yeah. have TDs doing it. The two Kerry fellas, five point two million they got for the use of that for the use of the hotel. You know, come yeah. on. It's no wonder they're not giving out about it. Why would you? Why would you buy the hand to play and feed you? You know, come on. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. they're 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 buying our country. Uh, <laughs> they're using well, our own money to do it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great system, all right. We have a couple of lads in Cork now as well that are uh, doing big business with the government. No, they're hosing, they're hosing, uh, they're hosing a lot of these guys. Donald O'Brien and um, Daniel Finnegan. Funnily enough, both of these guys are from the same village. It's just outside of Mallow. And yeah. and um, one guy, Daniel Finnegan, um, he put a couple of hundred migrants into um, St. Joseph's Convent, which is on um, a school grounds. There's four different schools on this ground. The migrants have to walk in the gates and share the entrance with two uh, creches. You seen you, did you do a video on that? Yeah. I've seen your video yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a secondary girls' school and there's a primary school as well. So this 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 area is full of school kids, right? And this guy put a load of migrants in here. He's also he's also doing it up in the city, right? On a place called uh, Gerald Griffin Street. 
he's putting a couple of hundred migrants into a building right that shares space with a school these guys are going to be looking out the windows at primary age children right in the playground um you know um the right, right the guy in Donal O'Brien he owns the building up in um Clare that was on social media recently. He owns that one, and he owns a few more buildings around the place. And some of these guys are making money hand over fist yeah. with this, you know. And they think right that they are being great entrepreneurs, right, by signing up to government contracts, you know. Yeah. But uh, they're basically just big welfare artists, really, you know. Prostitute. Um, look, they're they're not doing themselves any favors in the long no, run, and maybe we need something like that down here in Cork as well. You know, go to their houses yeah. and show them up. Well, there you go. We we can do it, and I'm sure Gavin will do it. I'm sure that's yeah, we can arrange that. That's no problem. Yeah, call them yeah. all out. There's a lot more yeah. now going on behind the scenes about money, people, and everything else. So you can watch this space because that'll be coming yeah. out the next week or two as well. I'd say. Yeah. You know. But the good thing about this is as well that um, the protest happened up in Dublin, you know, late last year or early this year. Um, it gathered an awful lot of support. But what we realised was the government don't really care if you protest. Yeah. It inconveniences mm. them. Mm. Um, it inconveniences other aspects of, of city life. But they don't yeah. really care, right? So this is how you evolve. The protesters, right, have now learned that they have to take it to the doors yeah, right, yeah. of the guys that are profiting from this. And this yeah. is the next step. And, you know, if this works, man, if this doesn't work, we we'll move, move on, on to something else. else. We we'll move on to something else. But yeah. you can't give up. No. You can't ever give up. You have to have to keep going because right, the alternative is you sit down and you do nothing and right, you leave these guys to destroy your country. Yeah. Derek, I was one of these people. Honestly, I was one of these people that was sitting back and doing I had a good job. I'd, I'd watch the football. I'd have me a few points. I'd do me, I'd, I did all of that. And then mm. COVID kicked in and I was on board with everything with COVID. I was wearing a mask. We were washing the fucking bags. We were doing stupid shit. And then I start reading up about stuff and I got to see different information. And I start telling people the truth. And I fell out with hundreds of people. Mm. Well, I didn't fall out with them. They fell out with me. And yeah. that's, on, that's on them. I don't really care. You know what I mean? They mm. know there's something going on now. And they mm. know how bad it's after getting. And they're saying to themselves, well, Fitzy was fucking right. But none of them would ever tell you you were right. Because no, they're no, so no. far in this. They have so much in the game here on this. They can't come out of it. It's yeah. cognitive dissidence. It definitely is. It has to be. You know what I mean? And we, we spoke about this on the show a while ago. I don't know whether you went to college or not. Did you, Derek? No. No. Okay. I didn't either. But what I'm seeing is a trend of people, all of these people who are out marching against us and doing everything against us, all these people went to college. Yeah. And and I'm seeing it. It's, it's indoctrination. Now, listen, my own family, well, none of my family went to college, but I mean, me, me missus and the whole lot, they all did. And these people can only see one thing. That's it. The government are always right. The government did never do anything wrong on you. Like, wake up and smell the blatant coffee. The government are here to take whatever they can from you. And they're drip, 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 they're chop, chop, chopping with the trans right stuff that's being rammed down their throat. The migration stuff is being rammed down their throat. There's no debate anymore. Everything is just rammed down your throat. If you don't like it, lump it. You're a far right mm. extremist. Yeah. Well, I've had enough of that shit now. I'm not listening to that crap anymore because that's not who I am or who you are or who anyone else is. And we are winning this. I know we are winning this because <laughs> you know we're winning it too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's too, you know, go back you know, to that seventy-five percent of the country. It's it's you know, and 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 speak to people on the streets, and it's yeah. like I said earlier, people don't have the guts to um, speak about it openly. If you if you meet them in public, they'll talk about the weather and the football and and whatnot. Yeah. But when you get them on their own, they are happy yeah. to talk about it, and and the major the vast majority of people I'm meeting. Right on the doors, know that something is seriously wrong, and if we can just get them down to that right, down to the ballot box, 
yeah. on the QT with their pen and just yeah, you know, give us the number one. Exactly. And That's put us in know. there then and put people like yourself and myself in there yeah. and yeah. with voices like ours, there's no there's yeah. no there's no there's hiding no it then. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's, no, there's no hiding it then. Well, the you know, the trend of history is is with us, and we are on the arc of history as we speak, you know, because the system that we are fighting against is the same system which militarily has just lost its pivotal battle. In fact, the pivot point of the entire World War III phenomenon in Bakhmut, when they lost yeah. Bakhmut. Bakhmut yeah. was supposed to be the jewel in the crown. Bakhmut was supposed to be where the Russians would absolutely destroy themselves trying to take it. Where what they was actually significant perish. about that? I haven't, uh, I haven't been yeah. following the the, the conflict uh, yeah. too closely. There's been so there's been so much else going on. Um, well, they you know over the last seven years prior to the outbreak of the war, they'd spent that time building up military forces in the southeast of the country there, yeah. and uh, building huge reinforced defensive structures designed to make sure that when the Russians would come, which they knew they surely would, because they were going to provoke them into coming by uh, starting to attack the southeast of the country and slaughter Russians in vast numbers with missiles, right? So mm -hmm. they were waiting for them. And all this high-tech investment in these defensive structures that you couldn't take, well, it took them a long time. The Russians were in no particular hurry to do it because they wanted to minimize their own casualties. But that has been the pivotal battle of this entire Ukrainian conflict over mm. Bakhmut. And in the last few uh, weeks, they have taken the final smoldering remains of what used to be Bakhmut into Russian hands. And all the promises that that could never happen have come to naught. They've lost the war. This was, and that has been the pivotal battle. And they're finished in terms of the war in Ukraine. They've now definitively yeah. lost it. And the same is happening in the United States where Biden and everything he represents is about to go down to a MAGA wave, yeah. uh, no matter who leads it, because MAGA is resurgent, just like we're talking about here. This grassroots people in the United States feel yeah. exactly like the reaction that you're getting there, except probably it's double the number over there. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, the tide of history is with us. The bricks have broken free of the Western capitalist monopoly system that we're fighting. And so the G7 nations are all that's left. And the rest of the globe has broken free in a huge revolt of which this Ukraine conflict was just a part. So this order is collapsing around us. So it's only right. And, it, and it's natural that you're getting that response yeah. because you know we are the coming wave yeah. uh, for the system. Powerful and all, as it seems at the moment, uh, it's dying as we speak. And we're seeing the evidence of that on the doorsteps now, people just disillusioned and looking for proper answers they're bloody well entitled to because this is just yeah. corruption uh, corruption yeah I was looking like at it sorry like I was looking earlier, at it um, yeah what? it's like you were talking about earlier right before I came on that that um, some people are looking at this and they're you know they're stressed out they're saying oh you know what's going on but this it really really is a fantastic time to be alive <laughs> because what's what's happening today is going to be written about in the history books. Yeah. And yeah, we're right here in the middle of it. And you know, the the, uh, the more the more you say about what's going on today, the more you're going to be remembered. Um, yeah. uh, going forward, and the more and the more you keep your head down, and you know, uh, uh, leave it all past you, boy. It's uh, it's a shame, really. But at the at the same time, it's a fantastic time to be alive, and I'm I'm glad that I can be here to to um, show my sons that I can stand up for their future, and you know, Paul. Right. Who, you know, so. yeah. Well, no, I'm the Perfect. same. It, 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 I I done this for the kids. Everything is for the kids. Yeah. Like I, 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 I'll be honest with you, Derek. My eldest is ten, so I was forty-four yeah. when I had when I had. Like I'm fifty-four now. You know what I mean? I didn't give yeah. a shit about life up until the time I was forty-four, and then I had kids, uh -huh. and yeah. my whole outlook on life changed. And I'm looking at what's going on in the schools, what's going on with the migration. Like my daughter, I'm, I'm watching her. She's going walking out with her friends, and like 
I'm tracking her phone to make sure I know where she is. And yeah. You shouldn't have to be doing that in this day and age. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just not right. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm standing up for. And that's all I'm standing up for is my kids, your kids, everyone's kids. You know, yeah. that's it. Because the kids are the future here. That's it. it you know? Be. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's... Uh... Well, lads, will we wrap it up then for this evening? Fair it sounds play. like a wrap. Yeah. It does indeed. Fair yeah. play to you, Derek, for coming on. Uh, oh, you know, just short just thanks for having me on. No thanks problem. We'll have you on any, yeah. any time. That's no problem. No, I'll we'll definitely be on again. Uh, do you know what? I haven't done a live stream now for a while because I'm yeah. so busy with other things, but I... Right, just doing this tonight, it just reminds me, right, that I thoroughly enjoy it. And it's, yeah. you know, it's yeah. good crack. And yeah, I'll definitely be on again. Well, that's um, it. It's just three guys shout the bridge, you know? That's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Listen, it, helps nice to it helps to keep people informed. You know what I mean? It's great to hear what the reaction that you're getting on the on the ground and on the doorsteps. And uh, that that's something that people are, are, you know, they like to hear about. And I like to hear yeah. about it. I'm very Thank you very much, Finn. It's been great. As per usual, with you. You're, uh, you're a good host, I have to say. You know your shit. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> but uh, nice listen, you. everyone, thank you Cheers, very much for thanks listening tonight. Thanks, thanks to Derek. Bye -bye. And uh, thanks to Finn. See you all again. Good night. See you again, Finn. Bye for now.